is now with self sufficient. The Second Republic has begun the dream of 35,000 balls and establishing village outdoor business units. This is said to consolidate national agricultural productivity and food self sufficiency in our country. Our mining sector grew from 2.8 billion in 2017 to the present 12 billion US dollars. And is propelling social economic development and growth to enhance the participation of small scale and artisanal miners. My government has established the 10 million mining industry loan funds while rolling out of more gold centers of the very times. Mr. Speaker said, and Madam President, the Second Republic will increase resources displaced towards the revolution and the centralization program. Priority is being given to projects which improve access and the quality of education, health, roads, water and sanitation. My administration is committed to industrializing and modernizing the economy as well as transforming our infrastructure in order to improve incomes and the livelihoods of our citizens. Our supply has significantly improved following the commission of Wangay Power Station Grids 7 and Grids 8. While arrangements have been made to guarantee stable supply from existing power stations, deliberate investments are ongoing for increased power generation capacity, including removing entry barriers for independent power producers. To enhance connectivity, we continue to upgrade the road network across the country through domestic resources. Similar initiatives are being implemented with regards to rail infrastructure with focus on capitalization, rehabilitation and refurbishment. The tourism sector is on a growth trajectory, registering an increase of 62% in international tourist arrivals during the first half of 2020. My government continues to accelerate the implementation of the Heritage Based Education 5.0 model aimed at producing goods and services for our country's social economic needs. This science, technology and innovation trust is a scaled up science based education from the primary level up to institutions of higher education. More of our young, talented boys and girls are registering patents and they're running viable startups. <coughs> Our economy. Mr. Speaker, Madam President, the fiscal consolidation measures and reforms have ensured positive fiscal outcomes that are critical for budget stability and sustainability and lasting macroeconomic stability. Complementary fiscal and market policies have positively impacted the attainment of the prevailing stable number of economic values. Going forward, the Second Republic remains resolute in 
implementing measures that ensure confidence in our domestic clients. Mr. Speaker, Madam President, may I now turn to the legislative agenda, which must combine the parliamentary schedule during this first session of the 10th Parliament. The Mines and Minerals Amendment Bill, Public Finance Management Amendment Bill, Medical Services Amendment Bill, Insurance Bill, and the Private Voluntary Organization Bill, which were outstanding from the 9th Parliament, must be concluded during the first session of this Parliament. Absolute laws such as the Fred Clayton Trust Act, the Service of Documents Act, several the States Leasing Act, and the War Marriages Validation Act should be repealed under the Repeal of Laws General Amendment Bill. New bills which will constitute the business of the first session include the Persons with Disabilities Bill and the Administration of the State's Amendment Bill. The Legal Practitioners Amendment Bill 2023 seeks to streamline the registration process for foreign legal practitioners. Also on the agenda will be inheritance and succession laws. General Amendment Bill 2023, which aligns inheritance and succession laws to the Constitution and international best practice. To give the latest matters related to climate change, adaptation, and resilience, the 10th Parliament is called upon to review the Water Act. The Zimbabwe National Water Authority Act and the Plant Breeders Act. The much anticipated climate change bill seeking to regulate greenhouse gas emissions and facilitate low carbon development technologies should be thoroughly be debated towards strengthening appropriate institutions and the funding mechanisms. The Parks and the Wildlife Act is being amended, whilst a human wildlife conflict relief fund is being set up to offer monetary benefits to victims of human wildlife conflict in our communities. Mr. Speaker said, Madam President, the Second Republic aims to fully exploit, value, and beneficiate the country's abundant natural resources. In this regard, as industrialization gathers momentum, Parliament must expedite the consideration of the Competition Amendment Bill. Economic Empowerment Bill, Standards Bill, Sugar Production Amendment Bill, and Technical Regulations Bill. Ratification will also require the respect of the Senate Protocol on Industry and Inter-African Coffee Agreement. Through the Electronic Transactions and Electronic Commerce Bill, Parliament will assist in the establishment of a framework promoting fair, accessible, responsible, and sustainable online transactions. The long outstanding postal and telecommunications amendment bill must be concluded. Government is committed to providing modern and affordable human settlements for all Zimbabweans. In this regard, 
There's a lot of construction contractors cancel bill. Six to establish an authority that will bring sanity in the built environment. Parliament is expected to consider the alignment of the Housing Standards Control Act and the Housing and Buildings Act. Government has made strides towards the centralization of service delivery, including deployment of medical specialists to provincial and district hospitals. Society's regulatory authority, Health Professionals Act, Family Planning Council Act, and the Medicines and Allied Substances Control Act will be brought before this August House. The enactment of the National Health Insurance Bill must be expedited to accelerate the establishment of the National Health Insurance Scheme towards universal health coverage. The Minister of Public Service, Labor and Social Welfare is expected to bring the National Productivity Institute Bill, Pensions and Amendment Bill, Operational Safety and Health Amendment Bill, as well as the Human Resources Practitioners Bill for consideration by this House. Mr. Speaker, Madam President, government is deeply concerned about the increase in the drug and substance abuse, especially among the youth. Measures to tame the scourge by strengthening relevant institutions for effective coordination and the programming of activities will be instituted. <laughs> Over and above this, government is developing the National Youth Bill, which will be considered during this session. The bill will provide for mechanisms to facilitate mainstreaming of the youth in social, economic, and political spaces, as well as the sustenance of vocational training centers in the house for local community development. I challenge the private sector to play a part in support of our ongoing initiatives for youth development and empowerment. Meanwhile, women play a critical role in nation building, and their contribution to economic growth should never be overlooked. Equally, viable and profitable micro, small, and medium enterprises have a far reaching impact on our economy as a whole. The Small and Medium Enterprises Act will be reviewed. Additionally, Parliament is expected to approve the Savings and Credit Cooperative Societies Bill to provide for the administration and management of Savings and Credit Cooperative Societies. The mainstreaming of community radio stations attests to the set of the public's commitment towards accelerating media reforms. In an endeavor to further open up the airwaves, the Broadcasting Services Amendment Bill should be finalized and amendments in the Zimbabwe Media Commission Act should be passed. Mr. Speaker, Madam President, sport is integral to job creation as well as the promotion of healthy lifestyles. In this regard, the Second Republic is currently developing the Sport, Leisure and Recreation Bill to 
create an enabling environment for sport and the initial delivery. Through the sport, in depth to build, Parliament is expected to assist in the creation of a regulated and a fair sporting environment in our country. Consider amending the Rotary's and the Gaming Act for the purpose of its alignment to the Constitution and the incorporation of corporate governance measures as provided for in the Public Entities Corporate Governance Act. Mr. Speaker, Madam President, our political independence came about through the support and solidarity of progressive nations in the region and beyond. Hence, the veterans of the Liberation Struggle Act will be amended to include Botswana. The smile of the countries that the transit games during our armed liberation struggle. Non-corporate cadres will be redefined to acknowledge those who played a part in the struggle and its end. <laughs> Similarly, the National Heroes Act will be amended to redefine categories of heroes, namely national hero, liberation war hero, and liberation hero. Amendments to the War Victims Conversation Act will now include recommendations from the Chicago Civil Commission of Inquiry Report. <laughs> and the matter strengthens its cooperation with the international community. The Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, which seeks to complement the Nuclear Non Proliferation Treaty, is expected to be tabled for ratification by the Minister of Justice. Furthermore, radiation safety will be strengthened through the Radiation Protection Amendment Bill. Biological weapons, which were used by the minority racist white settler regime during our liberation armed struggle, armed both combatants and the civilians alike. The Biological Warfare Bill will criminalize the use of such weapons by giving effect to the Convention biological warfare. To date, government has launched a national plan of action against trafficking in persons. To operationalize the plan, this august house must amend the Trafficking of Persons Act. Other pending amendments include those that relate to the Immigration Act, Citizenship of the Zimbabwe Act, National Archives of the Zimbabwe Act, Private Investigators and Security Guards Control Act, Official Secrets Act, Unlawful Organization Act, Censorship and Entertainment Control Act, and Debt and Debt Registration Act. This speaker and Madam President. In concluding my address, I wish to commend both the National Assembly and the Senate for championing the diligent discharge of business in the last parliament. Let me once again give this opportunity to urge all parliamentarians to all participate 
in the enactment of laws that will improve the quality of life of our people. Nika, Inova, Ivoto, Ivona, Matsima, never the right. Thank <laughs> you. 